So, assuming I'm on schedule, this video is going out on Christmas Eve. Well, unless you're watching this on Patreon, in which case it's a few days early. Anyway, it's Christmas Eve, probably, so let's get festive. Here in Britain, Christmas is panto season. Now, I know I've got a few viewers outside the UK, so how do I explain pantomime to an overseas viewer? It's a kind of theatrical entertainment, usually based on a fairy tale or a folk legend. There's some song and dance and some corny jokes and a bloke in drag. It's... it's tradition, okay? One of the most popular subjects is the story of Dick Whittington. The story goes thus. Dick Whittington is an orphan boy who travels to London hearing that the streets are paved with gold. When he gets there, he discovers that if the streets ever were paved with gold, it's long since been nicked. He ends up working in the household of a wealthy merchant named Fitzwarren. While there, he's bullied by the cook and generally has an awful time of it, but he falls in love with Alice, Fitzwarren's daughter. Dick uses the first penny he earns to buy a cat, which is really good at killing rats and mice. Fitzwarren is planning a venture to some exotic location, probably Morocco, but it depends on the version of the tale, and his servants each have to invest something. All Dick has is his cat, which he reluctantly sends on the mission. Having given away his only friend and consolation, Dick becomes miserable and decides to leave London. But he gets no further than Highgate Hill when he hears the bells of Bow Church, which seem to say... Turn again, Whittington, Lord Mayor of London. Turn again, Whittington, thrice Mayor of London. Having a history of making life choices on questionable pretexts, Dick takes this as a sign and returns to London. Meanwhile, it turns out that the King of probably Morocco is greatly troubled by rats, and he promises half his treasure to anyone who can get rid of them. Enter the cat which kills all the rats, and so, on the ship's return, Dick becomes immensely rich. He marries Alice, and indeed winds up as Lord Mayor of London three times. And he lives happily ever after. The moral of the story is, you should make major life decisions without thinking things through or doing basic research, and everything will just all work out somehow. But behind all this is a real person. There actually was a Richard Whittington, he did actually come to London to seek his fortune, and he actually did become Lord Mayor of London three times. He was born at some point in the mid-14th century into a wealthy Gloucestershire family, the third son of Sir William Whittington. Sir William died in 1358, so Dick did lose his father, but obviously it's not like he was alone in the world without a penny to his name. As the third son, he was expected to learn a trade, and he became a mercer. In other words, he dealt in cloth. Much of his dealing was with the king, Richard II. He also had a sideline in money lending, and one of his customers was, again, the king. He would also trade with King Henry IV and Henry V, even though Henry Sr. took the throne in a coup. Presumably, old Henry found that the terms of Richard's loans demonstrated political loyalty. Richard did indeed marry Alice Fitzwarren, and having become an influential man in the city, he did indeed become Lord Mayor of London three times. From 1397 to 1399, 1406 to 1407, and 1419 to 1420. He may have had a cat, but if he did, there's no surviving contemporary historic record of it. So the question arises, why does this man get his own folk tale? Yes, he was a successful businessman, but London's produced a lot of those. Well, he was also known for his generosity. He used his fortune for a number of public works, including a maternity ward for unmarried women at St Thomas's Hospital, rebuilding works on the Guildhall, and a huge public toilet by the river that was about here. I don't know if I'm allowed to be filming here. He donated extensively to charity. He had no children, and when he died, he left his fortune to continue his philanthropic works in the city. There's a tendency to mythologise figures who are notable for something. Lady Godiva probably never rode naked through Coventry, and Isaac Newton probably never had an apple fall on his head. I don't know if Isaac Newton ever rode naked through Coventry, but I wouldn't put it past him, to be honest. 
In just the same way, the tale of a businessman and philanthropist becomes more and more elaborate. He turns from a man born into wealth to a poor orphan, and the business acumen that brought him his fortune becomes a prophecy spiced up with a little happy coincidence. This story was well established by the start of the 17th century and has remained a perennial favourite ever since. The real story is far less romantic, so the fairy tale, for better or for worse, is what we remember. These days, Whittington, the folk character, has become something of an icon. Show a British person the image of a young man carrying a bindle with his cat by his side, they'll instantly know who it represents. There are other folk heroes of London, but none is quite so famous as Dick Whittington. And his cat, of course. Well, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Please do click like if you did, and subscribe if you want more of London's history. As this video is being published on Christmas Eve, I'd like to wish you all a Merry Christmas. Thanks, as always, to my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon. You are the convenient cat to my King of Morocco. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio!